Okay. We are talking okay. about NVIDIA SLI. I'm getting my display capture going here. I got to re. Oh, 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 I just moved. I just moved the Luke source. If, see, wah, if this. Wah. Okay, oh. there we go. NVIDIA SLI. Are you going to hover your mouse over it again? Transitioning. Week? Support is transitioning. That's another way of saying being being dead and buried it, to so, native it, game my, integrations. You're not even going to. You're pulling a Linus here. You're not even yes. letting me talk. No. Fine, because you go yeah, then. The you go. The title of NVIDIA quietly kills SLI. This is like if if NVIDIA is getting the credit for killing SLI, it's a kill steal. It's a kill steal. So who are you giving the credit for killing SLI? Honestly, Microsoft. <laughs> um, well, DirectX think, 12 doesn't exactly I think reviewers. like. You think reviewers killed SLI? Kind of. Like go very on, justifiably, like they go earned on. it, and it was good, and people should be happy. People should be Nvidia happy. Was pushing SLI for a long time when it was a giant steaming pile of garbage. Okay, it was terrible. Okay, it sucked, and they were still pushing it because they were like, "Yeah, buy four graphics cards." And reviewers are like, "This is dumb. This is stupid. Don't do it." Um, we we started releasing the I don't even remember what it was called. Um, Compensator compensator yeah we started releasing that to just like basically make fun of sli that was almost the entire point of those videos that's um, true we we released no, other we also made fun of extreme editions and overpriced motherboards and power supplies yeah but those weren't the reasons why the system like literally performed worse than other systems that's that was the fun true punchline. well sometimes they did sometimes the big multi-core extreme editions did actually perform worse than the more single yeah than the the lower threaded consumer yeah. chips yeah yeah that's true but it was and absolutely but it was mostly trashing on sli um yes and and this has been like a theme this was a theme for us this was a theme for other reviewers for a very long time while nvidia was still pushing it then like basically the whole industry just stopped i don't think very many people were pushing sli at all i saw a lot less of it in enthusiast builds mm -hmm. It basically didn't exist anymore, okay. and now they're they're pulling support for it. It's right. already dead. It's a, it's a, the, maybe maybe they're pulling the plug, but it's been on like life support with no visitors for a long time. Okay, so here's here's why I'm bummed, and you'll have to forgive me for maybe making some assumptions here, but. I'm bummed because it feels like NVIDIA is pulling SLI support at the point in its history where it is more likely than ever to work well. Okay, <laughs> yeah. over, the, over the last couple of generations, <laughs> over the last few generations, actually, NVIDIA has taken the SLI interface. Are you done now? Are you done laughing at me? All right. No, I'm, no, I'm not laughing. I actually, it's a funny comment because it's true. So NVIDIA has taken the SLI interface, which used to be, let's see, high bandwidth was 650 megahertz. Uh, the older one ran at a slower 400 megahertz. How much actual bandwidth was this? Standard bridge support SLI maximum theoretical. Here we go. So at 400 megahertz, it could do... Uh, two gigabytes per second in dual channel. That's that's not very fast. By contrast, the latest uh, iteration of NVLink. So if we were to actually say, okay, look, what we really need for SLI to work better is a much higher bandwidth interface between the GPUs, so they can share, uh, you know, frame buffer information or whatever the case may be. Well, we were we were already there. Dang it. NVLink 3.0 is 50 gigabit per second. It's like over the last few generations, they've taken that two gigabyte per second. They've gone to two and a half, three point something and six point something. Like, come on. They're, they're, they, they've actually got it to the point where like quadros can share memory. They can, they can actually pool memory and work on like compute workloads together on a workstation. I know it's not the same thing, Luke. I'm just saying it seems like if they'd actually been dedicated to it, instead of building the, you know, the world's premier AI computing company, that I think they could have solved it. That's all I'm saying. That's it. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, a lot of the productivity style things don't need 
like SLI to use both graphics cards. Um, no, but NVLink allows them to share their memory. It allows them to pool yes, their memory so you can work on much, cool. much larger workloads. So yeah. where's that for my games? <laughs> I just want that for my games. I want to, I want to play 12 K, uh, flight simulator. Uh, um, so from yeah. the blog post, should we at least run through what this means? Sure. Because if you have an SLI system, that does, this doesn't necessarily mean that immediately you're going to lose any performance benefit you would have gotten. So, okay, well, look, some games have a performance benefit. Man, you're yep. such a jerk. For someone who has <laughs> SLI graphics cards, you sure are hating on people with SLI graphics cards and awful, awful even, hard even, here. I didn't even ask for them. And technically right now I don't. Because because you told Emma she could have one of mine and now it's in her system. Did I really? Oh, I did do that, didn't I? Yeah. I'm awesome. <laughs> I'm hilarious. Okay. All right. So back to back to back to the blog post. With the emergence of low-level graphics APIs such as DirectX 12 and Vulkan, game developers are able to implement SLI support natively within the game itself instead of relying upon an SLI driver profile, which is just another way of saying. That it's a, a percent of a it's a one percent of one percent of users and game developers would basically be idiots to spend actual dev cycles on implementing this unless the intent of their game is for it to be used as as a benchmark. You know, if you're some if you're working on something like a crisis remastered or whatever. So hence, NVIDIA will no longer be adding new SLI driver profiles on RTX 20 series and earlier GPUs starting on January 1st, 2021. Instead, we will focus efforts on supporting developers to implement SLI natively inside the game. <laughs> so that's clearly, clearly not happening at all. Yeah. Then there's a, uh, oh man. So for GeForce RTX 3090, remember RTX 3090 is still SLI ready. They just shipped like like right that days before this blog post went up the first reviewers would have been hands on with RTX 3090 they just shipped an SLI capable GPU um and they're saying so for that SLI will only be supported when implemented natively within the game so that's fine because there's a big long list of game titles that you can enjoy here in the blog post such hits as Zombie Army 4 Dead War Strange Brigade. Okay, most most of these are somewhat recognizable. So we got Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Civ Six, Sniper Elite Four, like Civ Six. Like, okay, sure. Gears of War Four, <laughs> Ashes of Singularity, Escalation. Lots of people played that game. It was a big esports title. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Hitman, Deus Ex: Mankind Divided, Halo Wars Two, Battlefield One, and then Vulcan games that support it are Red Dead Redemption Two. Okay, that's like. I, I would say that that qualifies as a, as like a triple A title. Pretty legit. Then yeah. we've got Quake 2 RTX, Ashes of Singularity, Strange Brigade, Zombie Army 4, Dead War. So we have Red Dead Redemption 2, Benchmark, Benchmark. <laughs> Other more different Benchmark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Deus Ex. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. I have been preaching for a long time that you are far better off just you know, getting one better GPU than two slower ones. And ever since, I mean, you know, NVIDIA's been trying to price it that way anyways. <laughs> so, yep. Ever since like NVIDIA and uh, gaming media and consumers in general woke up to the importance of frame times compared to frame rates. Yeah. And we yeah. figured out how to actually quantify the micro stuttering that mostly people just felt beforehand. Um, there's been a big shift away from dual or, or especially triple or quadruple GPU solutions because that that added latency, like micro stuttery latency, uh, really hurt the gaming experience. Even if your system was actually, you know, feeding a lot of frames, they weren't being delivered smoothly and it, it wasn't really a, a fantastic experience. I will miss it as just like a fun, you know, EP narrator way to you know, trick out your system, I guess. But I I can also see how now that NVIDIA is committed to this strategy, it seems, of building more and more massive GPUs generation by generation, um, it, it almost feels unnecessary. Like now that NVIDIA has launched the RTX 3090, which has, uh, hold on a second, RTX 3090 power consumption. Let me just see if anyone has sort of quoted that already 
Um, this, the, the cart is expected to utilize around 350 watts of power. I mean, not only did they just launch a 350 watt GPU, they designed a new connector for it that's good for up to, I think, what, 600 watts? So if that's their commitment going forward is like, we're going to completely reimagine, you know, thermal, thermal controls for desktop gaming computers so we can start shipping like bigger, more monstrous, power hungry GPUs from now on into the future. I mean, if Nvidia just offers you a single card that's like, yeah, what? you know, SLI would have been, but we just, we just baked it into a chip this big. You can't really complain about that, right? And Makes sense. the like, whole, literally. yeah, the whole many smaller GPUs strategy has already been tried and it was a failure. Um, AMD went that route way back in the 3000 series days. And I mean, the old 3000, did they do a new 3000? Hold on. Yeah, 4, 480, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, 3000. 3, so the Radeon HD, like 3870, was not competitive with NVIDIA's top end. It was more competitive with NVIDIA's step down. And then the way AMD positioned it was, oh, well, we'll just pack two of these onto a card to get competitive at the top end. It didn't work. It didn't work then. It doesn't work now. And until someone builds like a chiplet GPU, I don't think we're going to see any kind of multi-die, uh, you know, gaming graphics solution. Um, I, I will be very interested to see what, if anything, Intel can pull out of their sleeves, though, because we've actually been hands-on with Z Graphics now. I don't think our video is actually up yet, but I'm fairly certain the embargo is lifted, so I guess I can talk about it. Uh, so we, we tested a laptop with onboard Intel Z Graphics, and... Wow, it's it's pretty impressive. Um, let me just make sure the embargo is up on this. Yeah, yesterday, yesterday the embargo lifted. So we had an Intel 11th gen mobile chip absolutely thrashing an AMD chip with Radeon graphics in it. Now that wasn't featuring um, RDNA 2, obviously. So AMD definitely has, they have a generation literally in the chamber to pull out and combat this with but we don't know how good rdna2 is so and we don't know how well it'll scale down to something like a mobile cpu so for now intel has managed to take back the crown in at least in at least one way one one way definitely at least one way <laughs> and you know what i say to that good for you hooray hooray indeed